Hello, this is Reggie York. This is a presentation on the analysis of the empirical relationship between two variables. I'm at the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. At the end of this presentation, you should be able to define what is meant by explanatory research because that's research related to the examination of relationships between variables. Number two, identify how to find information on the magnitude of the relationship between variables and to examine statistical significance. Two major things you would do in explanatory research when you are examining the relationship between two variables to see if one might explain the other. This is uh, only examining two, uh, examine, we're only re examining the relationship between two variables in this presentation. Looking at more variables will we'll await another presentation. You'll identify a few statistical measures commonly used in human service by human service professionals, and I'm just going to briefly illustrate what that might look like in practice. What you need to know to use the information in this guide, the number of variables in your analysis is two in this particular presentation, the things I'm going to be talking about. You'll need to know the level of measurement of each of the two variables in your particular analysis. I'm assuming you know what level of measurement means. You have nominal, you have ordinal, and you have interval and ratio. The magnitude of the relationship uh, between two variables is one of the things you will uh, learn from statistical analysis. This should help you with practical significance. Is the relationship really strong such that one of these variables seems to be a good predictor or explainer of the other? That's one of the key questions. The second, the likelihood the data would occur by chance. This has to do, of course, with statistical significance. Here are a few statistical measures for interval variables. If you have two interval variables, the Pearson correlation would be appropriate. If you're comparing two groups of people on an interval variable, the t-test for independent samples would be appropriate. If you're comparing three or more groups on an interval variable, Analysis of variance would be appropriate. We're not going to be talking about that in this presentation, however. If you're comparing before and after scores on an interval variable t-test, the t-test for prepared data would be appropriate. Or if you're comparing various scores to a single threshold score, the one sample t-test would be appropriate. Let's look at a few more statistical measures. If you have two nominal variables, the chi-square test would apply. If you have two ordinal variables, the Spearman correlation would apply. This presentation will focus on two statistical measures, the Pearson correlation coefficient and the t-test, which can be at least three different forms, that is. Uh, one of them is when you're comparing two groups of people on an interval variable. One is when you're comparing the pre-test and post-test scores of a single group of people. And the third is when you're comparing an interval variable to a single score. Those are three different ways that the uh, t-test can be uh, applied. Each of the above t-tests uh, are different. The Pearson correlation coefficient, the value of the correlation coefficient reveals the magnitude of the relationship. The value can be either positive or negative. If negative, you will see the minus sign in front of the coefficient that represents the strength of the relationship. That is the Pearson correlation coefficient. The value of the Pearson correlation coefficient can range from zero, meaning no relationship at all, to 1.0, meaning a perfect relationship. If it's 1.0, perfect relationship, one variable fully explains the other. Coefficients less than 0.4 are considered small, 0.4 to 0.7 are moderate, and 0.7 and above are strong. This is a matter of opinion. It's one of those things in the literature that people express opinions about. You may be interested in knowing what the common opinion is. Let's look briefly at the t-test. The t-test is used for comparing scores of groups. You might have two groups being compared. You might have two measurements from the same group being compared. Or you might have group data compared to a single score. It is a different formula depending on the structure of the data as indicated above. It is computed so that the value of p which represents statistical significance, 
<laughs> easy for me to say, can be found. You normally report both the value of t and the value of p. For example, t equals 2.3, and you can't see the bottom. p less than 0.05 is what this should say. Sorry about that. t equals 2.3, semicolon, p less than 0.05 is what you should be seeing there on the screen. Sorry about that. Let's talk about statistical significance. Statistical tests are used to see if your data can too easily be explained by chance. If it can, then it should not be considered a meaningful uh, basis for drawing a conclusion of the relationship. Chance is indicated by the value of p. If the value of p is less than 0.05, you would say that the likelihood of these data occurring by chance is less than 5 times in 100. And this would normally be the basic standard for statistical significance in the social sciences. That standard is arbitrary. If you want to use a different one, there's no scientific basis for arguing with you. But if you want to get your, your data published, you should uh, basically accept the normal standards like that. A p-value, just to illustrate, a p-value of 0.34 would mean your data would occur by chance 34 times in 100. Okay. 0.63 means 63 times in 100, right? Okay. Let's talk about measurement. You must have a data file for the analysis of your data. If you're going to go along with what I'm doing here, I will show you one. This means you have variables of interest that have been measured for a group of people, and you have that data to examine. You also have the means of statistical analysis like SPSS, which I will illustrate. So let's illustrate a little bit with a particular example. Three group, groups of students uh, at a university located in the south were given a survey that measured a number of variables, such as, for example, are you over the age of 30, yes or no? Uh, did you spend the majority of your childhood? That's questions. I'm sorry. The questions I recall were, are you 30 years of age or older? So that's slightly not correct, but that's OK. The, the important thing is we're, we're simply answering, we're measuring age not in the years, which would be normal, but in this particular situation, you're simply asked to say yes or no about the age of, for the, year, the age of 30 or higher. Uh, number two, did you spend the majority of your childhood lives, lives uh, years living in the South? Yes or no. There were also questions um, that were used to give scores on variables such as stress, social support, and so forth. Meaning there were a number of questions that were designed to measure stress. How much do you feel uptight? How much, you, how much do you feel apprehensive? Things like that. And those were kind of combined together to create a stress score for you. Same was true for social support. There was also a variable on health problems and a number of other kinds of things. But these were all used to form the variables. So let's just illustrate briefly uh, just a brief examination of what this looks like when you put it into the computer. Person number one here, whoops, sorry. Sorry about that. Pe person number one, as you can see here, uh, person, has, sorry, pe person number one was coded as zero for age, meaning they were below the age of 30. They were coded for one for South uh, because they answered yes, they were from the South. Their stress score was 13. Person two was coded one for age, one for South, and nine for stress. Person number three was coded one for age, zero for South, and 11 for stress. So in these variables, you're coded zero or one, depending on which category you're in. Both of these two variables, age and stress, I'm sorry, age and living in the South, growing up in the South. But for stress, you're given a score based on your answers to a number of different questions. Person number one, 13 is the score, then nine. Then person number three had a score of 11. Let's talk about age and stress. If you wanted to know if older people have more stress, you would be examining the empirical relationship between age and stress, where age is measured as a dichotomy, meaning yes or no rather than the number of years, which would be more normal, but that's not the way we're doing it here. Because you are comparing two groups on an interval variable, you would employ the t-test for independent data. Let's say you wanted to look at stress and support. 
If you wanted to examine the relationship between stress scores and support scores, you could use the Pearson correlation coefficient. Now that we've gone over that, um, let's talk about, uh, let's look at a couple of examples. First of all, I'm going to do a show a printout where the relationship of age and a number of different variables was put together. We want to look at, uh, let's say we want to look at stress and age. This is what we're looking at right here. Stress and age. If you're coded one for age, that means you're not 30 or above. Two means you're 30 or above. So those coded as, uh, as two are older than those coded as one. Here's a line of data showing the stress scores, the mean stress score for those younger. The mean is 12.6889. The stress mean score for those older is 12.0. This suggests that the score for those younger on stress is higher than those older. However, however, we have to examine statistical significance to see whether we have truly found a relationship. Is this really meaningful? Does this really tell us that there really is a difference? Okay, let's look at the p-value. I have I wrote it over here in the pencil. The p-value here is 0 0.40. Okay, I ask you the question, does this mean it's statistically significant? Is this relationship significant? Is this difference significant? Answer is no. It needs to be 0.05 or less in order to be statistically significant. So you would say here that you failed to find a relationship between stress and age in this particular analysis. Let's look at another example. Uh, let's say you wanted to look at this relationship between stress and social support. Let's just highlight this particular set of data right here. Here is stress is one variable, support's another. So you look, this is the right here. Uh, I'm going to ba basically just highlight this one because this is what we have. The Pearson correlation is the first thing you see, negative 0.04. That means the correlation showed a negative relationship between support and stress. The more support you have, the less is your stress. However, Let's look at statistical significance. Can we can, can we take this correlation coefficient and the direction of it seriously? Can we? No. Why? The p-value is 0.721. This is the p-value right here. 0.721 for the relationship between support and stress. 0.721. Not even close to being significant. So we would conclude that we fail to find a relationship between stress and support. Okay, there we have it. I hope this uh, helps you in examining empirical relationships between variables. Good luck.